does this mean surgery for the Ferrari? Forward to about 200 million turn. Right turn about 630 million. Going forward and right turn about 800 million. Have you ever wondered why the batteries don't seem to last long when you do a lot of turning? Now you know. All right guys, today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. Got some home maintenance to catch up on. I noticed after the last hurricane came through my, uh, I have this weather station and I keep the, uh, the weather station up in my bedroom and it has an outside temperature gauge and that temperature gauge apparently quit working. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. I thought maybe it was just a dead battery. So I'm gonna go take it apart and see what's uh, going on inside and if we'll fix it and get it back up and running. I know uh, with the days of uh, having iPads and other things for weather centers, you know, it's, it's probably uh, not worth a lot of effort and time to actually fix the weather station, but I kind of like it. It helps me get prepared in the morning knowing what the outside temperature is and what the day is going to be like. So let's take a look at this thing and see if we can figure it out. All right, so here's our scenario. So this is the weather station that um, I keep upstairs, and you can see it's continually searching for a signal from the temperature si uh, sensor there. Um, so I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with the temperature sensor and I noticed there's no LED lit on the actual temperature sensor and uh, um, so I'm going to take it apart and uh, you have to take these four screws out to get the batteries out. We'll take it out and inspect the circuit board and see if there's anything going on inside. So I'm just going to take my uh, little precision Phillips screwdriver here and remove these battery door screws pop the battery door off and there's also this uh, gasket around the battery door that keeps the moisture out so we'll put this over here out of the way there's some corrosion you can see the coppers turning green inside of there so there's been some water penetrating through that uh, battery cover so that's not good um, it takes two one and a half volt batteries and you put those in series as such and you get a three volt a three volt uh, supply voltage and that's what this um, this particular board runs off of so I want to make sure nothing's rusted out that connects these um, the batteries and the uh, to the circuit board here so I'll just pick up my I'll probably try to scrape some of that corrosion off as well so I'm just gonna pick up my multimeter here and uh, put it on our continuity setting all right so we have a stack here I'm just gonna test between these two terminals so good continuity there, so it's not rusted out anywhere in this plate that connects the two. Remember, the whole purpose there is to get the batteries in series, so we have two 1.5 volt batteries that will equal up to three volts DC. So let's go ahead and remove the body. I wanna see how the circuit board is situated here and uh, see if there's any, any issues there. It seems like something is either corroded or there's no connection across the batteries for our three volts. So I'm going to remove these four screws. Uh oh, we're missing the screw there. So we only have three screws. There's one missing here, so that could be part of the problem. I don't know how well that seals up, but um, so here we have our circuit board. And right away, <laughs> I noticed a big issue, obviously. We have our, our wires. To connect the battery have corroded past beyond uh, and have broken off that's the plus and then we have the negative sitting down here in the bottom and then we have just a little bit of moisture in here so interestingly enough the circuit board looks in fairly good shape so what I'll try to do is remove the circuit board and um, you know what's interesting is, is that 
out. And we don't want to lose the rest of these screws. Let's make sure we uh, tap these out. There we go. What's interesting is the connection here for the batteries. It looks like, I mean, it's just a bit corroded up. And uh, the solder joints just have just degraded over time with the corrosion and these these wires just uh, just popped off and so that's what gives the supply voltage to our circuit board there so we've got to figure out if we can melt these joints down there should be like a copper pad under there we can uh, solder our wires back to if I had my um, variable voltage uh, supply out here I would actually connect some alligator clips to the circuit board directly here um, we'll have to take it out and we find the copper pads and I'll be able to connect it to the plus three volts and ground and I could power this thing up and um, you know we could we could rule out any other problems um, I feel pretty confident judging by just the look of this board there's probably nothing wrong with it other than the supply voltage so I think if we get the supply voltage problem solved then we can get this temperature sensor back working so I'm going to take the circuit board off and see if um, so there's three screws here be careful there's some uh, some buttons that uh, that fit over top of the uh, the switches there in the uh, on the circuit board and so there's another screw that is up under this circuit board and looks like this is kind of a thermistor based kind of temperature sensor I think which is a resistor that changes its resistance based on the heat and depending on how the silicone is doped inside of that thing you may it, you get different characteristics so here's where we are so we got our circuit board off and I'm just gonna um, pick that up and look on the bottom side here it doesn't look too bad it looks like there's definitely a little bit of water has entered the circuit board um, but it may be salvageable I don't see any components that are burn up or so we have our three volt here and then our ground here um, I've made sure that we're on the same these things have an ABC switch for a different frequency uh, So I'm on C and C. I just double check that so I've got two things I need to do is work on the copper pads here On this circuit board and get these uh, wires soldered back on to that and then work on the connections here to this on the back of this plastic piece and I might be able to just heat up a soldering iron and kind of melt some of that off and get these um, soldered back on. And we'll try that and see what happens. Stripped it a little bit at the end there. Just enough to get the solder to melt to the pad. And now I'm going to do the, the red positive the same way. These are my wire strippers. Clip off any excess. I don't want too much bare showing. I'm going to reduce the heat. I've got my soldering iron out here and I've got it about on a number three. And then I have some resin core solder for electronics. This stuff has, it's actually probably too big too, but um, we'll, uh, we'll try to use it. But it has rosin. Uh, flux in the center of this so you don't there's no need for external flux and uh, I'm gonna see if I can first I'm gonna see if I can heat up these pads here and get this cleaned up for the battery terminal connections all right so we got our pads cleaned up there um, we probably have enough solder already there just gonna wipe the tip off of this sponge um, we probably already have enough solder there just to, to solder the wires directly to it so we'll just figure out which side here is plus all right so it looks like I'm trying to, it's hard to see it all right so the left side here is plus and the right side is minus so let's just give it a give it a try and see if we can melt this into the uh, the plus side there real quick all right 
So there's our positive wire and we'll do the same thing with the negative here. If we can heat this solder up a little bit. So we've got our two wires soldered on now. I'm just going to... I'm going to throw some vinegar, see if I have some vinegar in here to see if it can dissolve some of the acid around there. And then also tighten up these springs a little bit so they're, they're closer to the batteries. So a little bit of vinegar on this... Uh, And I'll just squeeze some of it in there. So let's clean up the pads on the circuit board here. See if I can clean up the ground pad a little bit. Alright, so we have the pads cleaned up on our ground. And our minus three, so now I'm just going to stand that up. All right, guys, um, I went and got my uh found my regulated power supply from uh, that I had packed up previously and brought it out. I did get the, um, the wires soldered back onto the battery compartment and for a bit I had them soldered onto the board but um, I actually took it off. It's just easier to, uh, to work with the regulated power supply. So uh, we got an input voltage on the circuit of three volts and uh, three volts DC. So I am going to power this up and just to check that this is o or this uh, circuit board is okay. I think um, we should see some activity from the LED which should tell us that it at least has power and we can probably assume the rest of the other stuff is okay since when we opened up the compartment uh, we saw that the uh, power wires were, were definitely not connected and there was no LED lit. So I'm going to turn the power supply on. We'll take a look at this LED. So I'm going to turn this on. Um, I've already set this up for um, over amp power protection here. I've got it set to like one amp, I think, um, which is probably way more than enough. I've got my voltage set to three volts uh, DC here. And um, hopefully we should see some activity out of this LED. And I think I've got to get it back on the... the pad here these alligator clips are kind of off so as you can see our led is now lit and i think it'll go through a flash mode um, so it will uh, probably every now and again um, actually blink for us so we'll see if we wait and get another cycle of that Okay, it looks like we've got a temperature reading, so we verified that um, the circuit board and the temperature sensor works okay. So now I'll just disconnect my power supply, um, re-solder my wires onto the uh, plus three volt supply and the ground, and we should be able to put her back together and everything should work. Put this back together. Let's get our batteries back in. We'll find our door. Yeah, it looks like we've got a signal already. So 72 degrees. The top there. So I'm gonna go uh, hang this back on the uh, the fence out back. And I'll put this back in the bedroom and we are done for this repair. Click the thumbs up if you liked the video. If you didn't, click the thumbs down. I don't care. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Till next time, skill up and...
troubleshoot some electronics.